Hi folks, it's Peter here from Rainbow Springs Fly Fishing with another little pro tip for you. Somebody um, in Sweden has asked us to do a little short video on how to fish in really tight spaces. So let's start off firstly by the way I'm dressed. Camouflage gear is important. The water here is really clear, it's a sunny day. The way fish see with the refraction means that they can see better than we can. So the camouflage gear obviously makes it a little bit beneficial rather than wearing your blue shirt or your green shirt or whatever. So I'd promote the use of camo gear in fishing in tight country. The fish are going to be in close and we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to do what's called a bow and arrow cast and we're going to do some tea bagging. So we've got quite a bit of a drop off here the same would apply in running water, um, but fundamentally what we're trying to do is get the flies to sink down a little bit to where the fish are, and then we're literally going to raise and lower it as though it was a nymph trying to hatch out. Now in running water you can do the same thing if you use a dry fly with a dropper and you just follow the pace of the stream. You can fish all these little bits individually, one little bit at a time and you usually find that the, where the better fish are is where it's harder for people to actually fly fish. It's not all about casting in circumstances like this. Now here I've got a TFO three weight rod, beautiful little rod. I've got a quite a short leader, it's only about seven feet long and I'm using an intermediate clear line for stealth purposes. Now the fly line doesn't actually do a lot here, but I'm just using it because it's clear intermediate and it means there's less chance of fish seeing fly lines. So the way I generally approach it to start with is will be initially with a bow and arrow cast. So I'm obviously looking for fish, but if I can't see them, the bow and arrow cast is literally this. Now what's important is you don't pull hard back, you separate your hands here, you hold it under your finger here and you use your elbow here to load the rod. And here it goes. Now the most important thing with a bow and arrow cast, and you can shoot line with it, separate your hands, push your hand forward, use this as a lead up to load. And there it is, and it goes out straight every time. Gives you a little tight loop, perfect. So it's separated it out, it's made it nice and straight. We're just gonna follow that. We're gonna let it sink down. It'll sink really slowly. We're watching for any movement to get a bite and then when it settles right down and it'll sink slowly and depending on how quickly the stream's running or how much wind there is you may need to add a little bit of weight to your fly. So that's just starting to go down now. We're going to leave it do its thing. We're not going to be in a big hurry and the wind is slowly moving it along the bottom. And the same would occur if there was current. So what do I do next? I literally just raise my rod and I flick it out there again. So it's all short work, it's all short casting and you're watching that leader as that fly starts to sink again. And obviously I'm looking for any fish that might swim past to make sure I lead it in front of the fish. Nice and simple. These little three weight TFO rods are beautiful to use in tight country. There's the nymph, off I go again. So it's very delicate, it's very subtle. There it is there, keep your hands separated, elevate, use your elbow to load, and that'll let it sink right down. So you can count it down where you think the depths are right and instead of stripping it 
you're going to slowly raise the rod then we're going to drop it again and this is tea bagging up and down up and down tea bagging then another little casual out she goes and again let it sink sometimes they'll eat it on the drop so you're only going to move the fly the same speed as what in this example what bait fish or nymphs might do so they're two completely different stripping techniques so a lot of people fish this in a real hurry and you shouldn't you should take your time be methodical because this tight country is going to hold good quality fish over and above some of the other water that appears to be easier to fish. Pretty hard day today, the sun's up bright, there's not a lot of wind and so the fish go deep. So that fly's just slowly sinking along this weeded edge. You don't have to move it a lot. And as the wind comes up, see I'm dropping my rod tip to keep the line from being blown through the water. We want it to be able to come up and down, not drag across. And that's how we fish tight country. One more, here it is, little flick in a different position. Leave it, I'm using the tree for, obviously for support but I'm also using it to keep me covered. And if you get a bite when they're really close like this, you need to be prepared because it's basically fishing at the rod tip and the fish will go like crazy. So take your time and fish it well. Obviously, if the, if the water's running, then you've got to be able to move the fly a little quicker but still maintain contact with the fly when the water's running so that you can feel the bite and set the hook. So these slightly shorter, softer rods benefit anglers in tight country. And if it was super tight, I also have, there's another little cast, I also have the ability to separate the top section of the rod and here in my belt I have a salt water rod holder which means it gets clipped in here the drag will still operate but now I can fish with just the top part of the rod to get a cast in just the top part like that. So if the country's really, really tight, I can do little roll casts. I can let line out. I can let it go further. And it simply means that in really super tight country, I have the ability to fish with the top part of the rod. And that's a lot of fun. And it means you're gonna get into places where other anglers can't get to. So fishing conditions have improved dramatically since yesterday. Yesterday was bright and clear, no wind. So today we've got heavy scattered cloud and a bit of ripple. There's been the odd fish rising. So we're gonna use the same bow and arrow cast and let's see if we can get one of these fish to eat the fly. Here's the bow and arrow, spread your hands, out she goes. Let, let it let it go. Now if they hit it, they hit it at the rod tip and they hit it hard. Just using a small black dry fly. Letting it drift down, same as if the river was running. A bit of slack line because we're downwind or downstream. It's good to have a ripple on the water. Makes your fly behave a little bit better. Also keeps you from being seen as much. Go 
Gotcha. What country? Who doesn't know what's going on yet. Nice soft rod. Soft tippet. There he goes. You want to keep them in the water. Turn them that way. Look at that. Not doing a lot. That's because the rod's nice and soft. Drag's done up a bit tight. Broken me off. Bow and arrow cast. Tight country. A whole heap of fun. Hope you've enjoyed this little segment. Please like our Facebook page. And if you want more information, go to our website at rainbowsprings.com.au. Click on the contact us page and we'll shoot you off an information pack. Bye for now.